One of the claims that we hear from climate change deniers is that clean energy production is just too expensive. In this video, I'm going to show that that definitely is not the case. Let's compare the levelized cost of generating electric energy for various power sources. What the levelized cost measures is the price at which the energy has to be sold in order to achieve a return on investment uh, that's positive during the lifetime of the project. Uh, there are various agencies which uh, have computed this levelized cost of energy. The figure I show here is from an investment bank called Lazar. And basically what they're telling us is at in 2020, what the cost was to uh, produce energy from uh, utility scale solar, uh, onshore wind, natural gas, geothermal, coal, thermal solar, uh, nuclear, and uh, short-term gas. Uh, as we can see, the price, the levelized cost of solar panel energy, photovoltaic energy, has dropped sharply in the last decade. The point where now uh, utility scale solar panels, uh, photovoltaic solar panels, are, are just about the cheapest uh, source of, of electric energy. C coming in close is onshore wind. Uh, that's shown in this green graph. Uh, natural gas has been the uh, most cost effective source of uh, electric energy from fossil fuels, and we now see that both utility uh, scale solar panels and wind energy uh, are, are cheaper to install than even natural gas. Uh, one of the other renewables, geothermal, uh, hasn't changed much over the years, and it's, it's more expensive than natural gas, but it's uh, less expensive uh, than coal. Thermal solar isn't much used anymore, and one of the reasons is that the, uh, the capital costs are very high and the operating costs can be high as well. What's somewhat surprising in this graph is that the cost of nuclear power has been rising in recent years. I'm not sure I agree 100% with the estimates from Lazar on this. I think they may be overestimating some of the costs involved uh, in decommissioning uh, existing nuclear plants. But nevertheless, nuclear is not nearly as competitive as it once was. Uh, the most costly plants to install are these gas peaker plants that come online when there's a sudden demand for energy and they're really expensive. But as we can see, wind and solar are now the cheapest way to go if you're a uh, a utility provider, for example, Southern California Edison here in Southern California, PG&E, uh, and, uh, and any of the other major uh, utilities across the country. And that's why a lot more uh, utility scale solar actually is being installed. Uh, it's also uh, one of the favorite sources uh, for community choice aggregation uh, projects. But there are some things that are not included in the levelized cost of generating electric energy. The most important to understand is that the, the levelized cost is basically the cost of recovering your, your uh, investment and making a profit. It doesn't say anything about any of the environmental costs associated with these different sources of energy. And one of the things that we have to realize is there's no free lunch. Every source of energy has environmental costs associated, associated with it. And in the next slide, we'll take a look at what those environmental uh, sources are. The levelized cost of energy production does not include the environmental costs that are associated with producing energy. Uh, there are two types of direct environmental costs that have to be considered. Uh, direct environmental costs, which are associated with mining, uh, operation of the plants themselves, and then there are long-term environmental costs that come about because uh, 
there can be emission of greenhouse gases which contribute to global warming and climate change and over the long haul uh, those climate effects are going to uh, create costs that have to be considered. The fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas have both direct environmental costs associated with production. Uh, coal especially has uh, very, very, very high costs for extracting the coal, for mining the coal, transporting it, and getting rid of uh, the products of com um, combustion, combustion uh, that come from burning the coal. Uh, oil uh, drilling has environmental costs. Uh, a lot of the more recent oil production is from offshore drilling and uh, that can be a risky venture and sometimes uh, wells, offshore wells blow out and create substantial amount of contamination of the uh, areas where they're located. Uh, natural gas tends to be a bit cleaner than coal and oil, uh, but it's still uh, most of the natural gas we get these days comes from fracking, and fracking itself can have uh, significant environmental impacts uh, while it's going on. Uh, natural gas doesn't produce quite as much in the way of greenhouse gases as coal and oil does because it burns cleaner. But uh, a lot of the fracking uh, natural gas uh, sites uh, leak pure methane into the atmosphere during their operation. So uh, all three of these are significant producers of greenhouse gases that have to be uh, taken into account when you, when you think about the costs of operating these plants. Uh, nuclear is in a category by itself. It certainly doesn't produce uh, uh, much in the way of greenhouse gases. Uh, it's clean in that respect, uh, but it does have some long-term environmental costs as well as direct environmental costs uh, associated with the nuclear fuel cycle. Uh, the waste products from operating nuclear reactors remain radioactive for tens of thousands of years and have to be sequestered from the environment. That involves significant costs uh, related to uh, both uh, securing and transporting the nuclear waste and making sure that it stays out of the environment for a very, very long period of time. That means that there are significant security costs associated with nuclear that are not present with the other forms of energy uh, generation. But compared to the coal, oil, and natural gas, uh, nuclear does have some advantage because it doesn't produce greenhouse gases to any significant effect. Uh, the renewables, wind, solar, geothermal, and hydroelectric, all have the advantage that they they produce essentially no greenhouse gases. This means that the environmental effects come mainly from uh, building and operating the systems. Uh, uh, wind power requires a, a lot of steel to build uh, the windmills. Uh, there are uh, land issues involved because space is taken up to operate the windmills and there are environmental uh, issues with bird strikes and so forth. Uh, photovoltaic solar, uh, there are certainly costs involved, environmental costs involved in manufacturing uh, the solar panels and disposing of them at the end of their useful life. Uh, those are not insignificant. Uh, geothermal, uh, when it operates, often brings up uh, uh, caustic fluids to the surface, and those can be problematical to dispose of. Hydroelectric is, is pretty clean in, in terms of not producing any uh, greenhouse gases, but it can have a significant effect on the, on the ecosystems where the plants are located. In addition, hydroelectric uh, power plants are, are really very capital intensive, so not a lot of new ones are being built around the world. But when we look at all of these costs, we have to estimate uh, what they add to the cost of operation of, of power plants. Uh, it's hard to get good figures uh, on all of these things. Uh, as I reviewed the literature looking at the environmental costs of energy production, uh, they tend to focus on one form or the other. Usually it's the people who propose one form who are looking at the environmental costs of the other. So it's, it's hard to get good numbers, but 
as far as I've been able to estimate, uh, the direct plus long-term environmental costs of the fossil fuels can add between 50 to 100 percent of the overall operating costs. Nuclear is a bit better, probably closer to 35 to 40 percent. The, the renewables uh, have the distinct advantage that they don't uh, produce any uh, long-term environmental uh, problems. They don't emit any greenhouse gases, but they do have uh, environmental effects associated with uh, producing and operating the plants themselves. And the estimates typically run from about 20% to 30 or 40%, depending on you know how efficient the operations are. But if you look at all of these and ask, well, what's your best bet as far as putting in a new uh, power plant if you are a, a utility or a community choice energy aggregator, uh, the best way to go right now is essentially onshore wind power and uh, photovoltaic solar. Uh, solar does have the problem that it, it you know, it's not uh, going to operate at night and you need to worry about energy storage, which can add to the cost. Uh, wind doesn't have that problem, but the wind does not always blow, which means that you have, you can have issues there as well. Uh, so uh, when everything is said and done, if you're a power producer and you're looking at the hard costs of operating a power plant, uh, even if you don't care about the long-term environmental effects, it's still cheaper for you to go with wind and solar. Uh, you may in incur some costs with uh, uh, energy storage, batteries and so forth, but when all is said and done, uh, wind and solar are not too expensive. They're actually very, very competitive with other sources of power. And I think that's the bottom line to keep in mind. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it very much if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on my picture in the circle below. Thank you.